we have Ashley um, from California. Mm-hmm. And she wants to talk about, or they, it's any any pronouns. So um, I want to be still respectful of that. But um, they're talking about being resourceful with latex and leather being expensive. So um, Ashley, thank you so much for calling. Hi, thank you so much for everything Yay. that you all do. It's incredible. Um, yeah, no, I want to start out with a little story first, because I really, <laughs> the the what the last caller was saying really hit home because I met this person and they were showing me some pictures of some like kinky uh, latex things. And one of the things was a hooded mask that went all the way over your face and head and was like tight at the neck. And it had like a bubble on the front of the face. So when you breathe in and out, it would expand and it had a very small hole in the latex. And <laughs> that was something that I was like, oh my gosh, like, but I, I, I never ended up going over there, but um, I, it was just exciting to think about maybe using, but at the same time, if you were to put that on and then for some reason didn't want to be in, in it anymore, like I could imagine that kind of being a process to get off and like, you know, so that would definitely be one of the more... <laughs> Uh, advanced things to try. For sure. <laughs> Breathing is important yeah. for definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I wanted to, like, really talk about, because, I mean, y'all talking about all these cool things of, like, latex and leather, and I'm like, oh, I love that. But, oh, my God, can I afford that? No. Like, first of all, I'm a student. Second of all, like, You know, I've been getting really into upcycling lately because, you know, with all this like climate change Mm. and fast fashion, all these things getting made, it's like, you know, I want to really live a life that, I mean, obviously it's not just about individuals, but, you know, recycling should be the last thing that happens. You know what I mean? So it's like, I wonder if you all, like maybe as you were getting into this kind of stuff, um, you know, ever got into like making your own stuff or even maybe not, you know, because it doesn't have to be like, I want to make like a cool, so I just saw this thing on TikTok. It was like, the, you can, you can crochet plastic bags together. And I thought it'd be so cool if I could make like a little um, harness out of that, you know, and like, write Like I'm trash on it or something like cool, you know? I love that. I seen someone who made like a whole outfit out of, you know, those Ikea bags, like the big kind of take it all home, like. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you make it. It's like a plasticky kind of mesh stuff. It's, it's also like this amazing kind of like leather boy outfit out of an Ikea bag. And I was like, that is so genius. <laughs> yeah, but, I love um, that. Also, I will say on the environmental side, latex, 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 latex is compostable. <laughs> because it is a natural product, you can actually compost it, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and fully sustainable, I how long that takes you know, when down. ethically farmed. But oh, yeah, I have to look it up now. I'm curious. <laughs> we have like a citywide composting thing here, so they mm. pick it up and they have like the industrial ones that break it down easier. But yeah, like PVC is around on the planet forever, but latex does eventually go back to the earth, which is a plus and a minus. Because after a while, like people's beloved outfits will go back to the earth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, but like making your own I, these days is not as hard as it used to be. <laughs> oh, sorry. If that was. Yeah. I wonder if there would be some more like, um, you know, like there'd be some, um, maybe you could find something and like upcycle it, um, you know, some kind of like cheap website or something to get it. It's just, um, you know, everything, it's so expensive. I wonder if it's more on the the manufacturing aspect of it and the ch- shipping it out, that's the issue rather than, um, you know, getting rid of it. But like, so do, do, do all of you, like, have you ever had any experience, you know, being poor, wanting to try out like new things and then having to be creative to kind of solve those issues? Yes. When I yes. was a student who really wanted some latex clothing and I, uh, yeah, I could not, like it is, I mean, it can be expensive. I, I don't know that there's a lot of upcycling because it's a special to make product just for like these one kind of thing. Um, so like the, there's different kinds of latex. I'm going to get super info dumpy here. Maybe <laughs> um, there's like part where um, people can like, you can take like, you know, like liquid latex that you might get for special effects, for example. Um, and people, it's not necessarily that exact stuff, but it's a similar thing. And you can like pour it over a surface and eventually it'll solidify into a sheet that way. 
Um, but a lot of it's made by a specific process, like an industrial process in Malaysia. Um, and I don't know the specifics oh, gosh. of it. But it's like created for like um, the garment industry now. Um, it's like a process where they leach out some of the proteins that cause the allergy to try and like limit the amount um, that that will happen. And as a result, like different glues and adhesives are going to work with like the latex differently depending on how it was manufactured and treated. Like one of the difficulties for repairing latex clothing is the surface changes from like either the lube um, over time or um, if it's been chlorinated. Um, so the, the adhesion doesn't work the same. It's like a vulcan, I want to say the surface, mm -hmm. it's vulcanization, mm -hmm. which is how it goes from being like a liquid to a rubber. Um, and you kind of want to get the two to fuse together. Like, I think, I mean, if you wanted to do like the crochet type thing, I could see that working. Um, like there's a, dra a drag performer, uh, Marnie Scarlett, who I've seen make costumes out of latex gloves um, and like gluing those down. So you could probably <laughs> even like knit or make a yarn out of strips of it if you could find it. Like eventually like you know latex clothing is no longer wearable like i i put a fingernail through a stocking one time and had it basically explode like a balloon before i went on stage and there was like no saving it so there might be people like literally just throwing it away um i know some small creators will sell uh their bags of scrap it's hard to get at the moment because of the supply chain issue and that's really hit the latex kind of hard but um like, yeah, you will find people selling, like, the offcuts, and, you know, you won't be able to make, like, a full, like, a big garment, but you could probably get really creative with those scraps. I use them for appliques um, and detail work, uh, and sometimes even there's, like, rubber bands in my workshop where I need them. I just take, like, my offcuts, <laughs> tie it up, and use it that way, but, like, it's definitely harder to get your hands on, like, um, there is, like... Oh, MJ Trends have latex sheeting that's really inexpensive. It's, it can be difficult to work with. Because I, I saw someone once say that, like, if you can get that, if you can get MJ Trends latex to glue well, you can glue literally anything. And uh, that was kind of true. But it is not terribly expensive if you wanted to explore and just experiment. Like, I think it's, I think even Mood Fabric actually carries some latex now. And, um, you can use the glues from like tire repair um, to do some like seaming and things like that. So if you wanted to try like the tire repair glue, like slime from, you know, the auto shop, <laughs> um, you can probably experiment with that. And maybe even, I think you probably still get like medical grade sheeting um, for like bed sheets and things. I don't know if like the medical suppliers have like a, a lot of accessibility to the public but that's like an element you could try but like places like mj trends and mood fabrics have like some sheeting that's relatively inexpensive and easy to get hold of if the supplies are still coming in because i was trying to get my supplies recently and the manufacturer i buy from was out and then my like retail <clears throat> person that i got from was also out and i was like oh i'm, I'm not getting any new latex anytime soon <laughs> but um I've seen like this one Japanese designer and I do not remember the name at all. And they use car tires with it. Like I've seen people um, use like old bike inner tubes and tires to create like clothing and accessories that way, which is really interesting. Hmm. Um, you can pour liquid lo latex onto, like I say, like a uh, different surfaces. But if you use um, like something that's like a porous surface, like a plaster, you could even mold it and create like accessories and things that way if you were like looking to get really creative and make all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. I was looking oh. to like develop my life into this new craft, is what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, like I, I've, I did some experiments. I made, I started making my own latex lace using liquid latex that I had really? after Halloween. Um, and I was like wow. using that in some cake making molds originally I ended up all cutting it so you can 
I, I've been using like I love I love waste. Like I I always collect all of my little like scraps of everything and see what I can do with it later. Like I turned an animal cracker tub into a smoke machine uh, cooler to make low lying fog. Like I love using bits of like what would be trash and giving it a new lease of life. It's like fascinating. And yeah, it might have weird or trash awesome. than most people. But... <laughs> no <laughs> doubt there. I, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and acknowledge for my part that I struggle to properly stitch a button or sew a button on. Uh, but we did do an episode a couple of years back with uh, some friends of the show from Forbidden Fruit. And they gave us a number of great ideas for how to create for yourself your own like homegrown upcycled uh, sex toys. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure to include a link to that episode in the show notes for this one. So I love it. Oh my gosh. It's like how to garden a cucumber or what? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen like, um, you know, like the little wires that they use for like bikes, you know, like bike brakes. It's got that kind of plastic coated wire. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people make some brutal toys out of that. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, oh a, if you're God. brave enough, a cucumber, a bike spoke, I mean, anything. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if well, you guys actually, remember, but there are these little, like, uh, one second, sorry, what? I don't know if you guys no, know you what could. this is, but it's, like, these little worms that have, uh, they're, like, they're, like, a yarn, but they have, like, little googly eyes on them and also, like, a, yes! a string, worm like, a, a string. for a fishing yes. line, yeah? So, yes. yeah, worm on a string. Someone I saw was making, like, little, little floggers out of those. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, like, expensive and, like, ooh, you know, latex to be fun and sexy. You know, that's what I'm, get, I'm trying to get right. at. I know you're the latex queen and everything, and that's incredible. But, you know, for us, for us out here that, you know, we don't have that kind of bread right now, and I don't have all the equipment to make that stuff, you know, just getting no. creative and, like, you know, sexy with your partner. You know, just a little something-something, you know? But, that's yeah, why I like PVC so a lot. Like... I have my latex stuff, but I still use PVC a lot because it's, I mean, you can buy it from Joanne's in the sale. They have it in the cosplay section now. Like it is really oh, abundant. I just hate buying new stuff. That's the only thing. Well, you can even use like old raincoats, um, for example. That's awesome. Or, there you, you go. Know. That's cool. Yeah. From the, from Goodwill yeah, or whatever. Thrift store. Or even yeah. like one thing, um, I haven't had a chance to play with it, but I had a pool inflatable that has died. And uh, you can get glue oh for vinyl, and you can even glue stuff together that way. Um, like, PVC is really easy to find. Because people, like, in the 80s at least, like, um, clear umbrellas, when they've died, that's, like, a good PVC mm -hmm. you can use. Um, I've even seen people do some pretty neat stuff with oil cloth. Like, you know, the tablecloth that your grandma has? Like... It's not stretchy, but you can make some real fun things out of that. And it's still got that kind of shiny. And it's a little bit more like the OG, like, Macintosh. Like, it's the fabric with, like, a waterproof coating. But, like, I mean, people are throwing away so much rubber. Um, like, so much good stuff made out of bike tires and car tires. Bike tires are a little more pliable. Um, but, like, you can you can do you can have some fun like you can use rivets on that it's not going to tear um and yeah like like this the, the shiny sky is the shiny limit <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> and even um yeah, no totally well thank you guys so much yeah yeah thanks <laughs> yeah, for for, for raising us, right? the topic and calling in yeah yeah, absolutely. I just want to do a quick shout out to uh, this Portland um, craft store that I went to. It's called Scrap. And if you go there, there's just like buckets of like all these different like m materials that people have donated that they would have rather like thrown away. There's like buckets of like popsicle sticks and, you know, buttons and all this. And it's like you could go there and get it for so cheap. You know, there are resources out there. You could get some cool stuff. So we anyway, thank here. you guys so much. You're incredible. We have one of those thank here you. in Austin. Um, creative Reuse. And the stuff they have there is bonkers. Like, I was there, and someone, I guess, had just donated bisque doll molds. Like, you know, for, like, slip casting, like, porcelain dolls? Had all the parts and all the molds. So you could make your own porcelain dolls for, like, almost nothing. Because they were selling these molds, like, real specialty molds there. And I bought a bucket of popsicles. Because I use popsicle <laughs> sticks for so much. And I was like, 50 cents for all these popsicle sticks. 
So no, anything can be fetish wear if you're brave enough and know how to sew. Is that is that kind of what I'm getting pretty here? Pretty much. Like I've seen I've seen people make make it out of some weird, weird stuff that I would not have thought of, like the IKEA bag. And I'm like, that's genius. Yeah. Or uh old seatbelts because it's super strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've seen people do really good stuff with like old seatbelts. And I think it's that I love using that's some bondage gear that'll work. Yeah. 